This tutorial will cover most, if not everything, that I think you need to know to run this category properly. If you have any questions or issues after watching the video, type in a comment and I'll get back to you. This run, as you might expect, is not set in stone, and a lot of it has to do with preferences. I suggest you try your own mana management and minor routing to see what fits you. Hopefully you'll find this video informative and helpful. Unfortunately we can't start with gameplay directly. I need to go through the options because there is a few things that you might really want to know. The performance of this game isn't really that great, so turning everything down to very low might help you a lot. Also checking that depth of field and light shafts are both off is really needed. Uh, for quality high, like this is this sort of random thing happens in patch 1.7 where I'm currently playing, it turns on for quality, data field, light shafts, some other options as well. So you want to keep an eye on these. I'm using FXAA high because it just reduces a bit of the jagged edges. Not much though. The more important thing in the options is adaptive resolution. It will make your game look like shit, but it helps with the FPS. Oh boy, it helps with the FPS. I can achieve 120 in most levels and 100 in everything. I rarely ever dip below that while streaming. So I'm using this. I'm using it on manual, which means it adaptive resolution and allows you to manually set the adaptive resolution FPS threshold. So every time I'm under 120, it kicks in. So it's basically almost always on. You can use always as well if you want to. It's completely up to preference. This is the more important thing. If you're running on a not so powerful rig at all, you might actually want to use performance. It, dis it reduces the texture quality up to 50%. It makes it look horrible, but it's, you know, once again, I would rather take the frames than the beauty. I'm using balanced, uh, it's 75% and of course quality. Uh, the difference between quality and balanced isn't that big, so going for balanced is worth it in my opinion. Also remember to put the FPS limiter, I think it's like set to 60 by default or something. So remember to set it to your own preference. That's basically all. So we start off from a save that's been created right after you wake up. I recommend that you create a quick save here. It's just gonna make those pesky resets way faster. We grab a bottle or a glass from the table and carry it with us all the way into the room with Ramsey. You want to throw it at the middle guard right here to keep him aggroed while you slide and cut Ramsey's throat. Take a step back and loot the body. Guard hits us, cancelling the animation and we can make our exit. Remember to shoot your weapon at all times when you're not going to do anything except run. You'll run a bit faster, quite a bit actually. After this animation, if you're lucky, the guards won't actually chase you and you'll get to the first proper trick of the game. We'll be coming back to this very soon. To do the bottle skip, do the following in any order. Well, grab the bottle first. Go to the table, line yourself up with it, crouch, look up, and throw. Just make sure the throwing and, you know, grabbing the bottle are on the right spot, but anything else you can do what you want. While moving here in the dark, move slightly to the left and then to the right and grab the painting. Prepare your eyes for the infamous Jarko Chomp. I've got to get out. The way that I like doing this skip, Jarko skip, is by coming here, lining myself up with this corner. The most important thing is to jump, and then you need to get a rolling animation. You hug the wall right here, you get this rolling animation, you start slowly falling down and you jump, hold A key to move to the left and land on this platform. It's actually pretty easy. You'll get the hang of it after a few tries, I'm sure. Just make sure you're lining up properly. You're not trolling too early or too late, and the chomping input actually isn't even that tight. So while we're here, I can mention that blocking, holding the block key negates all falling animations. So you just saw me bunny hopping there, holding block and jumping as soon as I land. The timing is pretty precise, but if you practice it, it's, it's not that bad actually. In this section there isn't really much to talk about, other than the fact that you need to touch this door, otherwise outside it doesn't spawn. That's why you see everybody doing this hectic spin Something's right here. Right, but it seems familiar somehow. 
Where are you? You might as well show yourself. Corvo. I felt this so long ago. The void. It was still there all along. Never thought I'd be here again. I know you. Maybe I got lit. You want to grab agility while you're here, most likely in this room, so you don't forget it. Only double jump as soon as we go and leave with the skiff. To the shore when you're ready. Ready for me to drop you at the docks? Ready. The old city must have changed a lot. Off we go then. One more time, old friend. In this mission, there's really only two things you need to worry about. Remember, to grab this fruit. It's really important. We need it for agility too later on. And also staying on this railing can be a bit tough but just have your cursor in the middle. Double jump and blink. That blink is not precise at all. Just somewhere around that rock and you'll do just fine. In this game whenever you pull out something other than your sword when you're in the middle of the climbing animation, you will cancel that animation. So keep in, keep this in mind and try to use it as much as you can. We'll be using the animation cancelling right here at the start of this mission. It's a very simple strat. You just sheet your weapons, climb on that ledge and pull out whatever. Pulling out a blink is obviously the best thing because you're going to be using it anyway. Remember to pick up these incendiaries on the ground, really important. Pick up agility too, and if your blink doesn't grow through this window, like mine didn't, just break it with a sword. On Hypatia, you want to use normal, normal, just normal bolts first, and then an incendiary straight after. It's a very quick kill that you can do from afar. There are sleeping dots on that desk that you need to really carefully pick up. You need to pick those up. This first part in mission 4 is completely timed. You need to go to the roof of that station as quickly as you can and trigger the cart coming there. That is what determines how quickly you can leave. Touching that point is what triggers the cart co to come out. Just, just go to that proximity. We'll grab those things and I'll we'll explain that later on why we're exactly picking up random nonsense here in 80%. This might seem a bit random, but there's a good explanation for everything, I promise. Here is an alternative way to actually go to the station from that building. It doesn't really matter what you do, as long as you're fast. To explain what we're actually grabbing here, is five money based items and one mana potion. There's one, two, we'll go down, grab the mana potion. And because this is exactly, this is, you know, you have a time limit here, you kinda wanna make haste. You grab the painting, this medallion, and this pouch. Easy ass.
there isn't really anything to explain here, it's just movement. Just careful double blinks here, and the next ones aren't even that horrible. Just remember to cancel your fall damage in these early jumps. In the next area there will be a whale oil tank that I'll shoot an incendiary into. Just look at how I shoot it, because that thing does have quite a drop. Killing Jindosh with a crossbow bolt seems to be a much better option than anything else. So, just aim at his head and, you know, Welcome to the final mystery, Jindosh. But reaching the chamber, we want to sleep dot Sokolov. So, after the second blink, destroy this thing, sleep dot Sokolov, remember to pick up the painting, and then make your exit. You can sort of freely use your mana here. You just want to have enough mana to make it to the shop at the start of the next mission. So ending this mission with two or one potions is completely fine. You only need three blinks after this mission anymore. The start of this mission has the reason why we've been collecting all the money and grabbing all the paintings and all that nonsense. We'll be heading to the shop right after picking up that wiring tool and just a little bit more cash. You'll either have 9 or 10 potions depending on how many potions you came into this mission with. That doesn't matter, the only thing that matters for me is ending this mission with 7 potions. 7 potions, that is what I aim for and that's why you'll see me tabbing out and checking my potions. You have two main ways of killing Brianna. First, the safer way that I'll be demonstrating here is a slide kill. And it's very easy to do and super safe. If you want to shoot her, that is the second option, you need to make sure that she has aggroed on you. Just blink up to her, walk up to her, whatever. Just make sure she has seen you. She has a bone charm that makes it so she can't die from a projectile she basically hasn't seen or whatever it says there. She needs to be aggroed. So if you've ever tried shooting her and wondered why the hell she doesn't die, that is the reason. I normally count in my head, my potions are allowed, but I would just want to make sure that I end this mission with seven potions. And I'll show here at the end, hey, I have seven potions and, well, three blinks. But like I said, that doesn't matter. The only important thing is we have that seven potions. Dust District. I basically treat my leftover mana as, well, leftover. I just empty it. I just make sure that I end this mission with one blink, as in, you know, zero blinks. That is because after this mission we'll be gaining a refund in mana, so we don't want to be full, we don't want to be near full or anything, because that's mana wasted otherwise. I've been doing recovery. The way that the riddle works is as follows. You always flip the second to last one three times sekonti. The riddle always has the same pairs in the same locations, but the names and objects change. So you have just have to memorize four of those pairs and you can just YOLO the last one because you know that it's the last remaining item. I'll be showing you in slow-mo how I do this. Got it. Now to find her. I read the puzzle always in the same order. First I would read Conti Diamond. 
then the next one would be Nuzio Ring. After these two, I would go and input these into the table. Winslow, Warmiddle, that is the third one. And we only need to find one more, which is going to be Finch, Snufton. Now I know the last one, the name doesn't matter, it's the last one that I haven't spinned, and that is going to be a bird. So unfortunately, because this is a puzzle, you need to memorize it. Uh, remembering four pairs, they're always give or take in the same location. They might be, you know, a bit more to the right, a bit more to the left. You'll learn reading it pretty quickly. I'll be leaving the image, the last one, which has all the pairs, all the four pairs that I use, down into the description. Mission 7 doesn't really have that much into it, to be honest, but I'll be going and showing the things that do matter. Definitely odd. There is a very so nice climb cancel here at the very start. You can use, you can just pull out Blink or Incendiary, it doesn't matter what you pull, but just pull out something. You'll be using Incendiary next anyway, and you can't use Blink in this mission. Drop down and kill Stilton. If you miss this shot, just go and swing him with your sword. It is not the end of the world, but just don't speak to him because that is very slow. Unfortunately, we have not found a way to skip this cutscene. If somebody finds a way to skip this cutscene and still complete the mission and get the timepiece or whatever, I will reward you with a singular cookie. Oh yeah, a single cookie. Remembering your keybinds for this section is actually very helpful. I know that my sleeping darts are always on six, and my timepiece is always in 7. This might change if you've changed your keybind settings. Anyway, after using the timepiece the next time, I will be pressing 6 to pull out my sleep dots, sheeting my weapons again, and after shooting Stilton, I want to switch to my timepiece once again, use the time, and then open the door. We want to make sure our weapons are sheeted so we can run up to the balcony very fast and sleep dot Stilton before he moves behind that pillar. The hitbox on that pillar is a bit weird, so watch out for that. Here we go, switching the time using the thing. You can actually use the timepiece and then even sheet it before opening the door very nicely. seem to be the worst here. The two times are overlapping somehow. This is arguably the most boring section of the game. There is nothing you can do. This is timed. Also the next dialogue with the outsider is also timed. There is nothing into it. You just run. So I'll be skipping this. I can take this time quickly while Outsider is memeing, explaining something about the Duke. So we want on any percent always, we want the real Duke to spawn in his quarters. There is four alternate spawns as well, and we don't want any of those. We want always the quarters. So that's where we head there first. That is the fastest. I'll be showing the alternate spawns as well, but all of those are a time loss. If your PB is not that great, you can still PB with it. But in the later on, if you start grinding this game, you will be sort of frustrated with it, and that's just part of the game. Welcome back to actual gameplay. So there you see, we still have the seven potions, and we got three blinks. That's why we wanted to end with low mana on the last mission. I want to end this mission with either seven potions and full mana, or eight potions and, you know, no mana. And there we grab the eighth potion. That's a really easy one to miss. Yes. I found a way to get around Paolo and Burn, and I've been to Stilton's house. Let's go. Mission 8 intro doesn't really have anything going on for it that much. Just remember to grab this mana potion and the incendiaries, especially if you've used some extra. There is one jump that might be a bit tricky, but it's really easy. You just hold jump and blink. And they are the same thing, just do a double jump with a, you know, just do an extended blink, basically. You'll see me checking my potions here. 
I have seven potions, and I, I can go all the way to four potions, and we're going to pick up one at the end of this mission. So we're going to be burning three potions here on yes. the way to Duke. Maybe I can find another so this is what you want Duke. to happen, and I'll be showing you after I finish this mission the alternate route for the Dukes in case you get duked. Just shoot him in the head and remember to loot him. It's really, really crucial that you loot him, otherwise it's like run rip. Another note. Don't grab that whale or tank, okay? That has killed me way more than saved me. There is no need to grab it. And remember to grab the potion here in this room. It's actually pretty easy to forget. So like I said, four potions, four plus one. I don't, you know, have that good of a math head, but that's five. So let's move on to the thing that will happen to you a lot. Duke will not be here. He will be in his quarters, but it's a decoy. Your soft life is over, decoy. What do you do? Well, the way that I handle it is I go and check the gardens first. I can't see red guards. Duke is always accompanied with red guards. So if there's red guards in the garden, I know to head there. Then you search for Delia's room and his office. Then if he's not if he's not there at all and he's doing the garden, you know that he has to be in the throne room. So throne room and garden obviously the worst possible choices. And here you can continue in case you don't check for garden, you can make your way and just check it manually here as well, but you know, basically run rep. So there's a very nice clip here, right at the start of mission 9. It's very fast to do, very easy to learn and just saves several seconds. I'll show you how to do it properly now. What you want to do is just jump on it and aim as low as you can do. Then just lean, don't press any other key, just press E. That is the default lean key to right. And you see, just blink down, there is nothing, that it, it is so astonishingly simple. The next part of this mission is actually pretty fun. Depending how comfortable you are with the last skip, the tower skip, Dunwall skip, whatever you want to call it, that kind of determines how much mana you want to leave. I want to leave three potions. Three potions is good for me, that is what I'm aiming for. But you want to possibly leave more if you fail on that skip a lot. Pardon me for using the heart here at the start, was not intentional. Wanted to show you the mana amount. We have three potions and we're going to do the Corvo skip, Donwall skip, the cheap, Emily skip, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. The important thing to remember is to shoot twice to the location where I'm shooting. We'll be aggroing the witch, and the witch aggro actually lets us skip the hard cutscene completely, and that is godlike. So how simple is this jump exactly? You hug the wall, aim up, take a step back, double jump, blink. No need to move anywhere anymore. Just double jump and blink again at the apex of your at the apex of your jump. Just blink. Don't move anywhere. Face this little stretch here. Double jump. Stop moving and blink. Easy ass. With that being said, we're ready to finish the game. Just be sure to be mindful of your mana so you don't get trapped while shooting Delia. Waiting there is the worst thing ever because you're so close to finishing the game. I'll be showing this where I aim so you can try to replicate it later on. Dropping down here obviously isn't the best recourse, but you know, mistakes happen. PJ Salt. So that was the end. Hopefully you learned something, hopefully I was of use. I did lower my standards for this particular tutorial, I wouldn't have ever gotten it out otherwise. So hopefully it wasn't too traumatic for you. Sorry if there's any mistakes or anything. If you have further questions, just pop them down into the comments. I read all of my bloody comments and that's why I'm going insane. <laughs>